Hi, everybody. This is Steve Monday, Chief Forecaster for Rowan County Weather. Over the past few weeks, you've seen me conducting interviews with various coaches of uh, high school sports and, and also some personal interviews with uh, individuals. And today we've got a special guest with us. This is Philip Hillard, coach of the Southeast Football Middle School football team. Coach Hillard, thanks for joining us tonight. Well, I'm glad to be here, and hopefully I can get some good information out to you, and it's uh, very appreciated to get Southeast on the map. Absolutely, and we certainly appreciate your time. You know, I guess luckily tonight for you, uh, no games since those are reserved for – Friday nights are reserved for the uh, high school teams, but uh, your teams, I think, typically play on Wednesdays every week. Is that correct, or am I wrong? On now, that? they've changed it. It always yeah. changes about every year. We play on Tuesdays now, usually at 4 o'clock, but okay. with the heat here the past few weeks, we've typically – we've had to go to 6 o'clock due to heat advisories – Mm -hmm. And that's been a little bit troubling with middle school kids and then transportation and stuff, but it's worked out well so far. I understand. Well, luckily you only have maybe our last 90, 90 plus degree day, typically for Rowan County, September 7th or September 16th on average. So we're getting there and hopefully the history will repeat itself and, and we'll be <laughs> past all that. Cause I know I'm ready to be past it. Um, so all fair, you and I were talking and, and there's uh, some, a new format and how the seasons are played now with divisions and things like that. So for folks that aren't familiar with that coach, uh, would you mind just kind of covering that for them? So what we have brought into the conference for Owen County, we went back to what they used to call the Tri-County Conference. They brought in Samuel Burke. That is the new secondary Mooresville Middle School. We brought in Ellis Middle School, South Davie, and North Davie. And how that's broken up, that would put us at 12 teams. But since Knox has been disbanded and kind of dispersed between Irwin West and Southeast, um, we've created a Bonnie Cone. So that gives us our 12 teams, and that creates two divisions. So how it works with the season now, we've started with two non-divisional games. Then you'll have five divisional games, and you'll have one playoff game at the end. So you'll have team uh, division, uh, so East and West. And then so how it works is you'll have number one play number one, number two plays number two, number three plays number three, and so on and so forth. That'll have that's how the playoff game will be decided. Understood. So certainly seems like uh we'll create some new strategy for you a little bit, I would imagine. I mean the ultimate goal is, is to win obviously every week, but uh with uh you know with some changes to how the uh, divisions are now and things like that, I'm sure that creates some opportunities as well to maybe make some strategical changes throughout the season if need be to ensure you at least make it into that first round of the playoffs. Oh, yes, sir, it does. And, you know, with those teams from the Davie High Schools, you're seeing a lot more bigger teams, and mm -hmm. it gives us, like you said, different aspects to how we need to adjust in our practices and to develop our offense so whenever we get throughout the season and develop our team, we'll be ready for whenever we play the um, Eastern Division. Gotcha. So tell us how your season's going so far. You're, uh, I guess you're at least two or three games into the season at this point. So how's the team handling it so far? So right now, middle school's tough because everything is very fast paced, trying to get summer workouts in and then transportation makes it a little bit difficult. So everything comes really fast. Right now we're 0 2. Um, we're putting pieces together on the offense and defense, putting people in the right place. So Good thing with the non-divisional games doesn't count towards the divisional play. So that kind of puts us in a place to where we're able to develop the team so we're ready for the this upcoming divisional game against Quarter Life and seeing how we do for the season. Gotcha. And so you got Quarter Life next and that game Tuesday, uh, if I remember correctly. And that's it. Is on it. Tuesday. And roughly maybe 6 p.m. or 4 p.m. I think. Well, you said 4, I believe, right? Yes, sir. Usually how that works is there's a 4 p.m. game. If there are yeah. heated boundaries where we talk as the ADs of the county and um, the head ADs from uh, Mooresville, um, Davidson, excuse me, Mooresville, mm -hmm. Lord, Mooresville, Ryan County, and um, uh, the David County Schools, we will talk amongst each other and kind of collaborate if it's safe to be out at 4 o'clock or we'll move the game to 6 p.m. Gotcha. Well, as of right now, with my forecast I put out, Tuesday could be a wet day for us. So it might not be dealing with heat exactly, but it may be more with uh, with rain and thunderstorms. We've got a 70% chance of thunderstorms right now for Tuesday. So uh, that'll create, a, obviously, another aspect that you'll have to look at, I would imagine. 
And I have been looking at the weather. I've been looking at your post in regards to the percentages. We always have to keep that in check. Usually, if we can get away with it, we'll try to move to the that Wednesday, the next day. Hopefully, the rain will hold out. Um, and that's usually our pl uh, plan of attack. Because um, I know when it comes to trying to do it Thursday or Fridays, it'll be hard to get refs because of yep. Thursday and Friday night football. Right, absolutely. Well, Wednesday does look a little bit more favorable, 30% chance of rain early in the day, and then by that point we're gone. So you may just have a soaked field to deal with by that afternoon, but other, otherwise uh, all the rain should be out of here. And, uh, you know, this is all – we're still several days from that, you know, as well as I do from, you know, where I do forecast, things can change really in a matter of days. So Tuesday can end up being a 30% chance of rain by the time we get there and you're able to squeeze it, you know, squeeze it in anyway. So we'll uh, – We'll see how things continue to develop there. So as you plan for Courier Life, not asking you to obviously give away your secret sauce or anything like that, but uh, what are you looking for to try to get the uh, keys to victory there? Um, biggest thing is getting all players uh, on the right page in regards to just uh, attacking the ball on defensive side, making sure that running backs, receivers, linemen are blocking the correct people in the right order, and then be able to run perfect plays, um, meaning to be able to run plays in any situation and to make sure it'll be viable for Tuesday. is That's our mindset because we've been running plays since probably middle of July uh, when it comes to summer workouts because most people have been the same people out there. And then the new kids that come on, it's just day in, day out, repetition because of middle school ball. You have kids that's played since they were four, and you have a lot of the kids who just started playing this year or last year, so it's a lot of learning and just getting good good reps, good reps. That's uh, game speed and game scenario, and that's our plan of attack. Gotcha. So before we – when we were working on trying to get this interview set up, I think you mentioned a, uh, a game you've got coming up uh, later in the season against China Grove Middle, I believe, and there was uh, – I think there's a neutral location for that one, if I remember correctly. Can you give some insight on that? So Dallas Masomer, he's the other co-AD at Southeast. He has some connections at Catawba. We actually started this last year and um, met up with the AD there, talked with her, um, and ended up we scheduled the game for China Grove Middle School. It'll be the next three Tuesdays from now. It should be September 15th. Um, it'll be at 6 p.m. at Catawba, and I'll be under the lights, uh, hopefully, if depending on the lights and everything. But it gives the players that next level type of feel, and I think it'll be good publicity for Southeast and China Grove as well. Uh, I think the kids will enjoy it. And it's a little bit different um, just to give something a little bit different aspect to the game of football for middle schoolers so they know what to expect. Yeah, absolutely. It certainly uh, will put them in a, uh, a different environment for sure. Uh, I'm sure that uh, probably can create some positive energy and, and some nervous energy as well. So what, what are you looking to do to handle that nervous energy that may come up with your players? Well, the biggest thing is is just the mental preparation. Most kids in middle school have not dealt with a higher level type of feel like at being at Catawba. It's just basically helped them navigate it mentally. Um, a lot of people have played on Catawba with like next gen defenders, power cross, so some have that right there. But the newer ones who don't have it, it's just walking them through it, pushing them, um, and just to get over that nervousness. And it's it's going to take some time once we first start, but I think they'll get acclimated to the environment. And the kids who've been there will help guide the other players, so it'll make a pretty easy transition for them to play on Catawba's turf field. Okay, perfect. So you mentioned next-gen defenders and power cross. Uh, obviously, that I'm assuming some sort of particular league play or something around the county. Is that is that what that is? Well, that's usually your local um, AAU teams. Um, okay. So we have a few of like our running back. He has been with Next Gen Power Cross. Um, mm -hmm. A few of the linebackers and linemen that we have have played for them the past few years. Um, and I know quite a bit of them over there, um, like John Knox, Craig Johnson, um, Chris Fowler, um, make connections with them. And it's, you know, talking with them, kind of getting players come out, and they've been a good help, you know, getting players from them to transition into the school ball. So it's been a good connection there, um, but they've done really well with what they've done with their players over there in those programs. Yeah, that's fantastic. I know that's I'm, – I'm glad to hear that we've got something like that here in the county for our players – I know that in talking to some of the soccer coaches, they don't really have anything like that outside of school. So they they deal with a little bit of a struggle of, of you know, taking some players that uh, really the only the only time they get to really develop is during that season of the school year. And then after that, it's kind of, you know, I, I hate to refer to it as street ball, but that's kind of what it is where you, there's nobody out there really telling you, hey, 
you know, let's let's work on this particular technique here. So oh, yeah. uh, it's good to see that, you know, uh, from a football perspective, you, you've got that uh, here in the county to help with that. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that really is a big help. Um, I know you do have club ball and it depends on what type of level of play you are. And some, you know, stick with club ball, don't play school ball. It's it's really a back and forth game. Um, it makes it a struggle, but that's what we have to deal with, just kind of like the concept in regards to being flexible. You know, this meeting we should have done yesterday, you had to deal with the weather. We had to move it here. Same thing with a coach in the high school and middle school level. We have to adapt to our surroundings because it's forever changing. It's not yes. like it used to be 10 to 15 years ago. And it's just being flexible, work with what you have, and make it the best that you can. Yep, Absolutely. Well, one thing I've noticed, uh, you know, my daughter, she's in high school now, but I remember her middle school days. And, you know, when they did have their, their games uh, in middle school, uh, I was actually pleasantly surprised at how many, you know, parents and fans would show up for those games, considering the time they're played during the week with folks, you know, trying to rearrange work schedules and things like that. Do you guys have a good turnout at Southeast uh, with, with your games as well? We usually do. Um, there's a lot of big fans, uh, fan support from there. And I will say our team parents, we have had a mom, um, Ashley Owens, that she said, coach, give me all the parents' numbers. We'll create a group chat. I'll take that off your plate. Um, oh so that, you know, so we've seen, you know, games packed out in basketball seats. There's no seats sitting there and like fan base. And we've, you know, lost quite a bit of games, but the fans are there to support. So I will say with Southeast, they have a great fan base no matter what the sport, because they believe in, you know, what we do here. And we just want to keep that, keep that tradition going. And then, you know, bring some wins to the program and, you know, really help kids, you know, to that next level is not just sport, but, you know, making them a good person uh, in and out on and off the field and court um, in the classroom as well, and then move them on to the next level. Perfect. Perfect. Well, coach, give us a little background on yourself. So tell us, you know, what, what has brought coach Hillard to this point? Well, a lot, a lot of experience playing ball, playing for Salisbury High School. Um, went to Wingate University, played baseball there, came on to the football team, helped Coach Reich there um, at Wingate win his first uh, SAC Conference Championship. Um, once I left there, I was at the YMCA for four years as a sports director. Came into the school system, which was funny, as one of my sports parents was the head person at the EC department for the county. And she's like, we got some spots up and where do you want to go? Got into the school system. Ended up, uh, got my master's in special education, uh, coached here and there for with Coach Phillips at Knox Middle School. Um, came in, I've coached at North Hills, Salisbury High School Baseball with Coach Maddox. And then just kind of bounced around and the previous few years ago, ended up went to Knox and coached for a year, uh, D. Miller. Uh, before I became AD, she was there. She's like, hey, you want to come teach math and coach football and baseball? I told her, where do I sign? So I've been there in the past. This is year three there now. Um, uh, worked on developing the baseball team, assisted coach football. And then the t the spot opened up, became co-AD with Dallas Mesomer and head coach of football and baseball now there. Oh, fantastic. Well, congratulations on that. It seems like you've worked real hard to get where you are. So uh, uh, look forward to seeing continued success with you. So you mentioned you're also the coach of the baseball team there. I know we've still got some time before we get back to that, but, uh, you know, uh, how how the baseball team do uh, this this season? Well, the past season we were went four and uh, four and fourteen um, or four and twelve. Uh, it's just a lot of young players. Uh, we had a lot of sixth graders who started a lot, um, like Tyler Raymer, Jace Joyner. Um, Jacoby Blevins, a lot of those young guys were there. We had um, Dylan Alexander, he did great. We had Colin Masingo, who's the, I think, the starting JV quarterback for Carson now. Um, he hadn't played for years, and I had him come out, and he was a really good hitter, really good first baseman. Um, uh, Dylan Walker, that was some of the eighth graders. So we've had a lot of transition with time frames of players. We had a lot of young, a lot of old, so it was a good mix just learning curves um, in that regard. But I enjoy coaching them because I like seeing them play at the next level and see what they can do. Absolutely. And uh, so you've got a, you know, new season coming up, obviously, next spring with the baseball team. And uh, this really kind of applies for both teams. But we'll start with baseball and come back to the football team real quick since we're talking baseball at the moment. Is it kind of a rebuilding year for you coming up in baseball or do you have a lot of returning players? 
we have about half the team is going to be returning. Um, we'll have another young team. We'll have a few a few eighth graders sprinkled in there, but it'll be a majority seventh graders and probably a good sixth grader. So it'll be pretty pretty balanced out, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, we actually are rebuilding our field. Um, we did do the infield with cannonballers two years ago, um, but we had some drainage issues that created, you know, water that stands in the outfield. So we've just had the outfield scout. Um, softball is actually playing at Carson now while they're rebuilding the field so we can have somewhere to play because usually when it like the last winter that we had was really wet and center field holds water terribly. Um, so we ended up having to play at JC ballpark last spring and now this fall we're redoing it. So it'll be graded right and it'll drain. So we'll have some more practice for softball and baseball. Okay, perfect. And then for the football team. So is this season, do you have a lot of balance there or are you kind of rebuilding on the football team this season? We have pretty good bounce. We have a lot of players that came from Knox. Um, we have a lot of uh, players from Southeast there. So it's been a good mix. It's a interesting transition, but I think they're doing well. Um, it's getting used to, you know, a whole nother environment from Knox to Southeast. And I think they've done well. Um, they're not used to seeing the teams like, you know, from the Davie school. So it's a little bit different atmosphere and then learning our new, we created basically a new system. Um, some of the same lingo that we talked about, like certain calls, but you know, with the offense, it's, it's different, um, with the new running backs from Knox and then the quarterback we've had the past two years, he's got a really good arm, um, not sure what high school he's decided to go to, but they're doing really well, and we'll see how they do during divisional play. Gotcha. So as far as where you guys feed into, mm -hmm. I, I've heard you say Carson a few times. So is do you feed into Carson in another school, or is it just strictly Carson? So with Southeast, they are directly in the middle of the county. So mm -hmm. we have kids who go to Western High School, Salisbury High School, Carson High School, oh, wow. some trickle over to East Run High School, um, and some even the South, um, wow. we're literally the, how would you say it? The Mecca of the school system in regards to where people transition to. Sounds like, sounds like you're certainly a hub there for sure. So, um, <laughs> coach, you sent over a couple of pictures of the, uh, you know, of some of the players on the team and stuff. I wanted to, to share those real quickly. And, uh, of course the, uh, you know, your obviously your Southeast logo there. Uh, but uh, and I apologize, these pictures didn't blow up as well as I thought they would. But uh, if you just kind of want to talk through what uh, it, you know what some of these pictures are here. So with this picture is like you're talking about the parents that we have are really good about you know sending film because I'm really big about sending film and watching kids show what they do. This picture is against Irwin. We we did a scrimmage at Jamboree over North Rand Middle School, and this picture right here was against Irwin. Um, we participated against Irwin, China Grove, and we were supposed to play uh, South Davy, but with the heat, we had to cut it off for the day. I understand so we that. Have, and I th I'm pretty sure we were on offense on this play. If you look in the middle of the picture, that's our yes. running back that we had right there. So it was a very interesting – this is going to be one of our teams we play in our division, um, Irwin. So it was a good – you know, it was a good basis for both teams, Irwin and us, to see what both teams had. And what exactly we need to work on, you know, as the season goes along. Gotcha. Yeah, certainly looks, uh, you know, looks like you uh, got a good turnout there. Uh, certainly got some valuable uh, information, I'm sure. Obviously, this is you talking to some of the team here, maybe in this one. So, yeah, it is. That's that's between our, our scrimmage sessions. We had probably about um, 15 to 20 minutes uh, in between each session. So we found as much shade as we could. I talked to him, kind of walking him through the situation because, like I told you, it's you got some new players that's never been here, some players who has been here um, in this situation, but trying to get them all on the same page because usually with football, if they're not on the same page, it never really goes well. But they did really good on this Saturday. I think this was about three weeks ago whenever we did this. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. I hear some people say, like, when they see a picture of certain types of food or whatever, that they can kind of smell the picture. This one, you can certainly see how hot it is just by looking, you know, at, at all these players and just how they're trying anything they can to to cool back off quickly here. So, Oh, yeah. And then as you can tell in the background, we had, you know, coolers back there, had moms yes. and dads who literally, with that support, they had coolers, drinks, ice, water, putting on the back of kids' necks to make sure yes. they were – you know, safe and ready to play for the next scrimmage. Absolutely. Uh, a couple of close-ups here of a few players, it looks like. 
So we have Damon Brazard is number six here on the left. The one, the kid right there beside the referee is Landon Monteith. Uh, tall kid directly in the middle is Cam Steele. And then the one I believe on the far right is uh, Bentley Parker. Um, I think what's interesting is he just started playing football and he's been on my starting line. Cam Steele, he's been a basketball player. This is his first year playing. Mon, uh, Landon Monteith's been here for – a few years playing football and he's done what had his brother two years ago or last year. Um, I believe it's Cruz Monteith and then Brazard, he's been our starting quarterback the past two years. So he's going to be a very, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what he's going to do on the high school level. Um, and we're trying to make sure we get him, you know, developed for him to be ready for the next school year. Absolutely. So, uh, Real quickly, for anyone that's planning on not only coming to the Courier Light game, but uh, any of the games that you haven't already come to, RSS has a clear bag policy in place now uh, for safety reasons, obviously. I mean, you can point out several things over the last couple of years that have, have probably led to this uh, with, you know, various basketball tournaments and and what have you. But, uh, you know, they're just doing this to make sure that everyone's safe, not only the students, but the spectators, you know, any, anybody that attends any of the games. So uh, clear backpacks. Uh, clear cinch sacks, clear totes, clear fanny packs, um, you know, anything like that. You can't have any camera bags, diaper bags, clutches, binocular cases if you cannot see through them. And uh, bags are subject to search even if you can see through them. So just keep that in mind if you're coming out to the games. Coach, I hate to kind of put you on the spot here, but I do have, like I'll use uh, South Rowan as an example. Uh, when mm -hmm. I was talking to uh, their coach over there a couple weeks ago, he was saying that their PTA or, or their uh, booster club actually has some clear bags they sell there at the games with logos on them. You guys doing anything like that over there with your booster club or anything? Unfortunately, we're not. Um, we usually on the middle school level, it's not as in depth as a high school can go because right. they, they have a lot bigger basis in regards to how big their booster clubs are, PTA. Mm -hmm. So we don't really offer anything of those um, type, but usually with our parking area, they can usually go back quickly to their park where they parked at and put it back or find some type of clear bag to bring with them um, for those games. Sure. Absolutely. Well, coach, I certainly appreciate your time. The, the good news is uh, I like to use this as an example, um, you know, with, uh, with, my media colleagues that do newspaper and, and, and TV news media and things like that, they only get the allotted time that they're allowed or the allotted space in the newspaper that they're allowed. I only answer to myself so I can give you guys unlimited time. So uh, any last minute words to your, to your players and, and the parents uh, heading into the game against Corey or like, I think the biggest thing that I would like to say is I'm very grateful for this opportunity and grateful for the parent support that I have from the team. Um, always proud of my kids and want to make sure that uh, don't don't worry about what's coming next is just be prepared and do the best you can. Absolutely. And that's the best way to look at it. Anything we haven't covered yet for your team or, you know, baseball team, football team, anything like that that you'd like to share here before we uh, wrap things up? I think we pretty much covered everything that, you know, needed to be said, kind of what to be expected. A lot of it is just, you know, kind of what we talked about is just come out and see what Southeast has done and where we're coming at and what we're developing with the sports programs there and hope to see anybody who sees this, they come out and watch some Southeast sports. Absolutely. And uh, they can certainly do that now. I didn't get a chance to pull this. Usually I do, but uh, do you guys have any kind of social media that you utilize there for your sports, especially like football and baseball? There is a Southeast page for uh, Instagram. There's a Southeast page for Facebook and for Twitter. Um, we're predominantly on Instagram, mainly Facebook. Yeah. Um, we usually post our sports uh, schedules, uh, pictures, and what's going on around the school and kind of what's some updates for parents. And parents are really good about checking that. And uh, Ann Hendrick is the one who takes care of that. And she does a great job posting stuff, what's going on around the school throughout the day, big events, and sports events as well. Perfect. Well, I will look for that information and share it in the blog post that this video will be attached to. So anyone that's watching this can go there to that blog post and find that in case they want to follow you on any of those platforms uh, to get you know information about Southeast. And Coach, it's been a pleasure. I'd love to come back and revisit with you as the season goes on. And maybe as, as we get into the spring next year, we'll talk some baseball as well. That sounds like a plan to me. I really appreciate it.
All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Coach Hillard. And again, that's Southeast Middle School. So get out there and check out some football games. You got the Courier Light game coming up next Tuesday. And then, of course, the game we mentioned about China Grove Middle playing them at uh, Catawba College as well, which will be a fun atmosphere. And I'm sure a lot of fans showing up for that game would be uh, pretty neat for those kids to play in that kind of environment, and have a good turnout there as well. It'll be a lot of fun. As always, thank you, Coach. This video will be available. It'll be on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. It'll be on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and also on our website at romancountyweather.com. And we'll have it posted there shortly.